So in this one, we'll take a look at how to clean up this particular image. It's a bird image. The subject is more or less in the clear and it has been sent to me by a friend of mine who wanted to see how this could be done. So as we all know, there is no open file option in Lightroom. So even if I drag and drop here, it will still go into import. So I don't want to import this. So I will do a workaround on this. What I will do is I will just right click on any image from my current rooftop session today. Show in finder. And I will just copy this file here because then it is easier for me to remove. So now I right click on the directory. And I say synchronize folder, import new photos, show import dialog, not really required, we just synchronize and there we have the photo where we want it. So the first thing I would do, I am going to develop and the presets are already applied, I will just press W to fix the white balance, that seems ok. Highlights uh, can be pushed up a bit, shadows can also be pushed up. We shift and double click on the whites and the blacks and then adjust as per taste. Just zoom in and take a closer look, that seems ok. Temperature is probably on the higher side. So, we'll just bring it down a bit. Clarity can be improved. It's a reasonably good shot. You can go into details and press the option key to bring up the mask and we'll uh, put it somewhere around here. Because only the white areas would be sharpened and that's all we want. We will also take a look at the radius, uh, it seems to be reasonably fine. The tone curve and stuff we can also do in Photoshop. Now this kind of cleanup is a pain to even attempt in Lightroom. So we will go straight to Photoshop. A command E will take us into Photoshop. So there we have our image and as always a command J to duplicate the layer so we don't have to reload in case we mess it up, a command 0 to fit in window and we will do a select subject to see if that works, uh, just about reasonable. Uh, let's just press the Z and click to zoom in a bit, a W to pick up quick selection tool and the default mode should be add and we can just try adding the areas select subject has missed out on which we will refine a bit later oops too much command z and we would actually want the branch So let's just do it till here. Pressing option will change it to subtractive mode and uh, we can just remove some that we don't really want. This is okay, this is okay, this we can remove later. So we just press the left button on the mask and then we go into cleanup mode. I zoom in a lot, press B for the brush, make sure it is black, you can press X to switch between, black will hide and white reveals. So let's just right click and see our hardness which is okay. 
and just clear this up a bit. So you can decrease the brush size and get into the more detailed part. Erased a bit more here, so we'll press X to get the white back and repaint it. Now these normally for the edges, I would always want to cheat and keep the background at the same kind of tone and color. So none of this actually has to be cleaned, but if needed, we just put a lasso around here. We go into color range, make sure invert is selected and click on the blues. Bring the fuzziness down. Oops, it's too much. So somewhere around there is good enough because this will merge into the background. Command D to deselect. And we have some missed out areas. We can always enable the background to see the missed out areas. Right? And we can also decrease the opacity if you want to see them both together. Generally, there's very little requirement to see them both together. I increase the size of the brush and paint the area back with white. And in case uh, you're not sure, you can just paint the entire thing. Press NX again to go back to black and just paint this out. It'll just take a additional minute or so to make these cleanups. And I'm sure we have, yes, a very sharp blue here. This will not work. So we can either erase it this way or once again pick up the lasso tool using L. Go into color range, make sure invert is selected. Click on the blue, bring up the fuzziness to the default of around 40 and that should be good enough. We can do a shift and click again to select the other range. Command D to deselect and for our purposes currently this looks good enough. Now generally the way I cheat in these kind of images is I make another copy of the background copy which is essentially the same image and I use the same image as a background for the cleaned up image after it's blurred out. My most commonly used filter here is field blur, but because we have so many distractions, I will go into blur and I'll do a box blur and a fairly large one around there. And maybe I will also do a motion blur here. just to make sure we don't get the same kind of colors in the background. Now, this you can use as is, there's nothing really wrong with it. Generally, I would still try the field blur against this anyway. Push this up, let's see how well it comes out. That seems to be pretty reasonable. You just add maybe 1% uh, grain to it and that looks good enough. We'll just do a OK here. Now let's crop it first before doing anything else. Now let's put the ratio back to original. We don't want to change the crop ratio here. And somewhere around there should be okay. A command zero to fit. Now we can go back to the mask. Press a B for the brush tool. And using the black color, just erase what we don't really require.
Now, although I don't mind these kind of artistic images where you cut the branch off, but some people are more particular. So, what you can do is use the selection tool to select part of the branch. A command J will copy this. Oops, you have to select the image first. A command J will make a copy of the branch onto a separate layer. Use the move tool shortcut of V and just add to this branch. Make another copy command J and you can plug it in wherever you want. In fact, you can even uh, transform this. Let us say I press a command T and I flip it horizontally and distort it Mm, that looks okay and the same can be done for this side. The idea is just use the healing tools to make sure you are not repeating elements and it looks more or less natural. The other option obviously go back to our image, press a C to crop and you crop it in close enough. Now this delete cropped pixels which I generally turn on because I do not want the file size to increase if I ever want I can recreate the background. Content aware in case you are increasing the crop size it will try and fill in the non-existent content. We do a ok here. Ok now that we are done with this and these are part of the same. Let us just do a command G and put them in a group. So, anything we apply to the group uh, applies to the entire image as such. For the background, we can go ahead into adjustments and let us say hue saturation and we will use this to clip it just to the background although not required in this case. You can play around with the hue to see where it actually fits best. Right. Similar for saturation and of course, if you make it light, you see we have this line here. So, we can go back into a group, select the mask, we do a select and mask maybe a radius of around 10 ok. So, if we do a smart radius it goes up to around more than what we want. So, that should be good enough no smart radius just a wee bit of smoothing and maybe a feather contrast and we shift in some of the edges. So, that looks good enough just go with that. So, I have the option to make a new layer with the selection set and that is why I have a copy here. Go back into a move tool, press the zoom key, zoom into this. Now, there are two ways you can deal with this. One is of course, grab the brush tool, make it small and just brush away the colors and details that do not really match up. Now, 
you could actually brush away this entire area it does not really make a difference. The other thing you can do is to use the smudge tool just make it smaller so it is visible and you can just press these in. Let us see if we have any more on the edges, yes. So, we do a press up here and a side press and one in the middle that deals with that. In case you want to do this around the edges, you can. So, wherever you feel the need, you can simply smudge in. Like we have lost some detail here, we could even smudge out to fill it in. like some color aberration here you can just pull it down but i guess you get a rough idea that this is what can be done actually this doesn't really look natural enough so i would probably take the brush and remove it similarly any other details like here we can either use the brush use the lasso tool to select the area go into color range make sure invert is selected and that's done so what if we do not like the background here it is pretty simple you can go back into lightroom I already have a wide selection of backgrounds. So, I will just go into my top level folder and just type background. And depending on what you are trying to achieve, you could probably put in any of these. Uh, Let us say this, just do a command E on this to take it into Photoshop. So, this is our new background, you press V for the move tool and let us see. Now, since we have this in a group, we can actually use blending modes on the entire layer if needed. Let us say the hard light seems to work and we can add a curves layer. And just pull up some of the exposure. You can also go to the background layer. You can do a curves, hue, saturation, whatever. But now, since we have a blend mode on, it will also impact the actual image. So, we can actually set this to pass through or normal. And now, if we change this, and of course, we can flip, transform, rotate, background. If there is not a very smooth bokeh on it, you can actually use the filters to make it smoother. Entirely your choice. So, that is how you would go about cleaning these kind of images. And let us see if we can actually do something very similar in on one.